coming from the streets, I am not afraid to say it and say it loud. Because out there on the street when it's raining at night, I cannot sleep. Because I know there are several kids that have to wake up in the middle of the night when it's raining. They have to lean against walls and hide around chaos and other shelves. They have to stay up because they don't have any adequate shelter. My name is Paul Semi. I founded the Street Children Empowerment Foundation. Hey, Lara, how are you doing? I'm good, Paul. Good. Ten Give me five. Blues. At every step of the way, I encountered a lot of challenges. Growing up, I was born into very bizarre circumstances because I lost my father very early. I worked on the streets as a child. I had to earn a living as a child. Ah, I see. I sold anything that was sellable to be able to go through to support my mother who work the Abaye, where the AMA comes after them and all. Although the public education is said to be free, I had to buy exercise books, I had to buy uniforms, I had to carry even my time, I had to carry my chair and my table to school. So the fees and other charges that existed in the school meant that I had to work on the side after school. I would close from school and go sell kerosene, sell pure water on the street, sell polythene bags. I would run in the traffic, I would run shop to shop and make sure these things were sold so I could make a living. I pursued my education with determination till I completed the University of Ghana, reading sociology and philosophy. Growing up as a child, going through all the vulnerabilities and having been involved in a lot of activities on the streets of Accra. I came close to the street children problem. If you come to statistics, research done by the Department of Social Welfare and all organizations working for street children estimates there are over 100,000 street children in Greater Accra alone. The challenges that these people go through, number one is food. Some pick from the streets, some pick from trash, some pick from other places. I remember how friends would go to restaurants or chow bars and ask that the food that people have ate and they want to throw away, they would want to have it for their meal. Uh, and that is what they take home as uh, a unit or a group of children to feed on. I believe that the 100,000 street children are the greatest asset of this country. These children are going without their rights to education, their right to adequate shelter and health care. A country that is not prioritized the education of children has no proper planning for its future. So education of children is a bedrock for development. And this is nothing so in the clouds that we cannot do. There are several agencies like myself 
doing work, amazing work to help street children. Street Children Empowerment Foundation rescues, rehabilitates, and reintegrates streets and vulnerable children, working closely with the children themselves, their parents, and the community they live in. The Street Children Empowerment Foundation uses holistic approach in reaching street children. I am somebody who believes that you teach by example. When I was a, a young boy, when you stand in front of me and you talk, 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 it doesn't really get to me down. like when you use an activity, when you use a song. I remember all the songs my classroom teacher taught me. So building a center for street children I, I thought that how can I bring that to the fore? How can I use creative art? How can I use the craft lab? How can I use songs and fun to engage children to get them their interest into school? Both hands. Safe. Yes, we can. Through the services we provide at the learning hub, where there's a craft lab where kids can use art to learn. There's a classroom where kids can learn basic numeracy and alphabets. There's a library where they can read all books in various fields. There's a computer lab where they can learn by doing two games on the computer. And we saw there's a whole world of experiential learning out there where you, you teach kids by doing. Holding on for the honor. This is my gift to you, my gift to you, yeah, yeah. Then we have the three hours program where we go on the streets, we rescue the kids and we bring them to the learning hub and they are involved in all these activities. I naturally connect with children who are involved in any form of hazardous activity. By drawing them close, I get into their world, I invite them to our centre. So the major issue is about trust, building trust. Uh, because a lot of people come to the streets to traffic them, to do all sorts of evil to them. And once they get to understand that I am not there to throw arms at them, I am there to support them to live a better world, they open up their world to me. When we are down stressed from work and from our activities, our daily engagements, we go to the social work, we go to creative arts, we go to some music, we go to some comedy, some form of arts, and we heal ourselves. And the other thing that interests me is, it is where we can entertain. It is where we can actually relax. We are dealing with children with trauma, people, Children who are from homes that are broken or no homes at all and are by themselves on the street and trying to make ends meet. They need the healing. They need something that will soothe them, something that would almost entertain them. They've not been used to 
sitting in the classroom and learning and learning and learning. So why don't we take the education to them, what they are used to? So we come to the streets and what you are used to, the rap music you like to sing, we are bringing the rap to you, but in a way that you can learn to spell your name, you can learn to spell various activities and various things. With your thumbs up, knees bent, shoulders up, chest out, achikicha, achikicha, achikicha. A problem child is a child with problem. A kid comes to the learning hub and is very aggressive. They want to fight all the time. When I allow them in the games and the energy and we are burning the energy, then I see and I say, you are fighting. I could tell the problem the child is having. So when we rescue a child from the streets and we take them to the learning hub, we immediately involve their parents by inviting, inviting them to come over. We start with the rehabilitation after the rescue. And the rehabilitation involves counseling sessions with the child, the mother, so they understand that education is the tool they can use to get out of poverty. Then we give the child scholarship to go to school. And every school term, we go to this child Again, we're counseling, and with the, all these counseling sessions, we intercept problems before the child goes back to the street. They have been convinced education is their right, they go to school. Then all these bills are slapped in their face. To make matters worse, when they don't have these things, teachers will bring them in front of the whole school to ridicule them. They are being punished for their poverty. Sing on the keys. Can you give me C? Please sing. several lessons that a child learns from. Learning the rhythm is about learning to be disciplined. Me again. Me again. Me. Music is priceless when it comes to social work with children with trauma, which is mostly the street children that we work with. People, kids who may have trauma, when they get into music, they get better with their team skills, they get better with their timing of things. And creative art is an area that we can use as a profession, where you can actually make money. So it's not something that you can just only use to heal. It's something that you can use as a profession like painting, like playing music, making nice music. That is a profession people can actually go to and make a life from. Drawing is an aspect that what the imagination, th imaginative things you have in your head, the thoughts that you cannot even express but you have encountered. Some kids come to the learning hub and they cannot 
say much because they have not been used to adult questioning. They have been used to being by themselves. Like a girl walked to the learning hub and she, has, she was being abused. Anybody talks to her, she won't talk. We give her a plain sheet of paper and a pencil to draw. And what she draws tells me she is being defiled by somebody. She is not able to say it, but she can express herself through the art. and I have two other sisters and life has not been easy for us because my grandfather is the one who is taking care of us. He has to go out and work and bring it to the house for us. Sometimes he doesn't get money to bring to the house. As I was 13 years old, I, saw, I sold pure water at the seaside just to earn something for myself. I met the founder of Street Children Empowerment Foundation. Since that, we started, this relationship started growing and they helped me through my education from junior high school to senior high school. Self provided me with books, uniforms, school fees. I have learned a lot from Self. I have learned tie and dye, batik, how to use papers to make designs, even papers you can use it for decorations. You have a timetable, one year you should be a master fashion designer. I know a guy who went to UCC, now he designs ties. Learning how to sew is a little hard, but not that hard. We they always tell me, yes, I can. And if I say, yes, I can, there is nothing that I cannot do. I have to try my hands on what I know that I cannot do. I want to become a great fashion designer. After apprenticeship, I'm able to earn money to provide my basic needs and what I want and also to help my family and also to help any other person who needs help if I'm able to help that person. Street Children Empowerment Foundation has changed my life. I began the Street Children Empowerment Foundation uh, on the 13th of September 2010. But without any money, without any resources, it's only an unshakable determination that I moved the organization from a one-man organization from a street bar to an organization that has a learning hub and so many children that are on scholarship going to. We sent emails, we sent messages, we made calls, we booked appointments with several agencies, and it started gathering. By even in three months, we had already started the ball rolling. We did our first big school supply time. We gave a lot of school supplies. One step at a time one battle after the other, one success story after the other. Now, CEF has grown to become an organization that employs 13 Ghanaians. An organization that is also registered in Germany, in the US, and in Finland. An organization that each month gets minimum 15 volunteers, and in a year having hundreds of volunteers to support what we do. And it's grown to the point that volunteers do amazing things to support. Once they know what we are doing is a good cause, 
volunteers will go as to organizing fundraisers in their home country. I'm Lara, I'm 19 years old and I'm from Germany and I'm doing an exchange program here in Ghana. So I came uh, and I'll stay for 11 months here in Ghana. I didn't really have any fixed or clear picture of Africa or especially of Ghana before I coming here. So as Street Children Empowerment Foundation, we're working with children, with young children, trying to teach them some basic things. And for the teaching, we are using diverse and entertaining ways. So we want to make learning fun for them because we believe that's the best way to learn. We use creative methods. We use uh, craft and, and artworks to help them and teach. And they get support or help uh, with doing their homework. For me, it's every time amazing to meet the children and hear their stories. And often these children have uh, suffered some hardships or have experienced negative things in their lives and then to meet them and see how they are coping with it. I feel very happy with working with the Children Empowerment Foundation and I'm not the only volunteers. We have international volunteers from various countries in the world. The team is very open and uh, friendly. And uh, Paul Seme, who is the founder of CEF, I think uh, I really admire him for the work he has done. I think they're really trying their best and uh, having an impact in the lives of the street children in Accra. We are a properly run organization. We have a properly structured board of trustees. Our, the funds we raise are properly used, so we are regulated by auditors, Bachanakote and Associates, BNA, so to ensure that the funds we raise are actually being put to good use. How I deal with my team, it's not a matter of age, it's a matter of the value we are creating and the experience I have gathered in the field. I motivate my staff by leading uh, making them the things that if they think are not possible, I just do them and they, feel, they realize that they are possible. Yes. yes, Carol, have you recorded what you have to record for the donations and kind of uh, picked up? My mother has been the bedrock of my development and who Paul Sema is. She is anything you can think of what a strong woman is. On her shoulders alone, she carries six of us boys working on the streets, struggling from hand to mouth, from one job to the other. She grew from nowhere, having no education. She valued education to the point she would sell and give up anything to make sure I got education. This guy had life in his eyes, the yearning to make it for himself. But seemingly crippled boy, he would walk, crawl from this kiosk and come and beg for arms. And in his own wit, he would send kids to get him food and anything he needed to survive. I took Bernard in, I took him to the hospital. We went through surgery. That cost us huge sums of money. He lives with me, he gets his shelter, his feeding, and his education from me. Bernard has become part of my family through adoption.
life is given free of charge and everything in it is also given free of charge. But I have learned that life is war. Life is a fight to get the things that have been given to us for free. Because growing up, I saw so many food going waste around me, but I'm hungry. I see so many resources around me, kids with so many clothes, so many shoes, so many things in life, and I had none. So even as a child, I said, if I grow up, I want to make sure that every child can get any a cloth to wear, shoes. If I travel anywhere, I'm going to pick up all the things that people have in excess and make sure I give it out. Imagine a future where all children, regardless of their disparities, have equal opportunities in reaching their fullest potential.